Uh, thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, today is Tuesday, February 7th, 2023. Uh, we are doing a training titled Nemesis Dashboards Overview. Today, Ben Fisher is going to give us an overview of the dashboards, uh, the data visualizations, the key performance indicators, and a quick view of important measures and issues that you can find uh, on these dashboards. Uh, you're going to learn which dash dashboards are for state, vendor, and public use, and the purpose of the various dashboards. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn the time over to Ben. Ben, go ahead and take it away. Uh, hey, thank you. Um, hang on just one second. There. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, we are uh, going to talk about some of our our dashboards that are available today um, and a little bit of the overview uh, about how they receive data and what's contained in them. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Nemesis, this is going to be kind of geared towards someone who, you know, public training, so potentially unfamiliar with Nemesis. So some of this will be a little bit of background. Um, but yeah, as Chris mentioned, I'm Ben Fisher. Um, I've been at the Nemesis TAC for about two years and I worked for a state office of EMS for a little while before that. And then I was a, uh, um, uh, lieutenant for a large metropolitan EMS agency that did uh, QA for the agency as well. Um, so I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with both agency state and then Nemesis data as well. Um, and uh, we're kind of excited to show you what we make available in our in our Tableau dashboards. What we're looking at here right now are just the is just the landing page for the main Nemesis website, which is how you'll be able to access all of this, uh, as well as some additional information, including getting um, help from the Nemesis team um, by opening a support ticket or uh, some of the additional uh, resources that are available here. So to get to any of the actual dashboards, they're all on this tab that says View Reports. Um, and you'll see a list of, of quite a few. So there are uh, three primary aud audiences. So uh, public, uh, EMS agencies, and then some kind of specialty audiences like um, states, software vendors, uh, and and federal agencies. Um, they're roughly the same dashboards, but they have different permission levels. The state dashboards are only made available to state data managers to view data for one particular state. Um, our data use agreements with participating states do only allow us to um, share national data. We can't do anything that identifies any individual state or in any individual geographic area below the state level. So the state reports are only available to uh, our state data managers. Federal reports also similarly are only available to our federal um, federal stakeholders. So just broadly, uh, for the public public dashboards, we have um, two levels of dashboard or two two data standards for each of the dashboards. The version two dashboards use the version two data standard that is was from 2014 to 2016, and then version three is um, the past two years to present. Um, the version three data standard is a lot more robust than the version two data standard. And then we also have another product that we've done previous trainings about called the data cube. That's a little bit like a pivot table uh, in Excel, if you're familiar with that. Um, please feel free to type questions in the chat box or come off mute and ask questions, raise your hand if at any point you have questions about any of the, the material. Um, the version two dashboards, or actually, let me let me back up and just say each of these topics is a dashboard and there's a companion guide for each of these uh, dashboards. So let me go over to the, the version three dashboards and you'll see um, for each of the dashboards, like the 911 call complaint dashboard, there's a user guide for each of these as well. And the user guide will have additional material about the actual dashboard. And I'll talk more about those in just a moment. So the historical data for version two, that is from 2014 to uh, 2016, um, because the data standard was uh, contained a little bit less granular information, tend to be a little bit broader. We're in the process of changing some of these dashboards over into dashboards for the version three uh, standard, but not all of them may be migrated to, to version three. So this is an example of a version two dashboard that we made many years ago using the, the data for cause of injury for, um, for pediatrics. Um, and it contains some information about the cause of injury as well as uh, the time of day that the pediatric injuries occurred. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the version two da uh, data just because at this point the data is uh, uh, a little bit older and the data standard is a lot less robust. So we're gonna kind of move into the, the public version three dashboards and all of this again, view reports, public reports, and then the version three dashboards. Um, 
all of this data is submitted by clinicians who uh, are, are entering data at the time of care. So an EMT or a paramedic will have a, a tough book or a tablet, and they will enter the clinical information related to the, to the 911 call at the time of care. We get the data in as little as seven minutes from the time of uh, patient care to uh, it reaching the database. This data is continuously processed, but the dashboards are updated roughly every two weeks. So very timely data still, but there's enough lag that we make sure that we have uh, all of the, the data before we uh, put it on the, the dashboard. Um, the dashboards are all done in Tableau, um, and I'll show some kind of common features for how to use the Tableau dashboards. And I will just say there is a note here on the, the dashboard page that there is a way to email subscribe to some of these dashboards. So if you do find one that is very helpful, uh, you are able to subscribe to a, an email um, kind of scheduled uh, uh, refresh of the dashboard for, for uh, to receive in your inbox. Um, I'm actually going to skip over the opioid overdose dashboard because we've done a dedicated training. I think it was the last uh, monthly public training was specific to that dashboard and is available on our YouTube page if you'd like to get in, in depth on that. But I will just mention we partnered with the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy to create an opioid overdose dashboard. Um, and it has a, a, a video explaining it, a, an extensive user guide, and then um, the dashboard itself um, has some pretty valuable opioid uh, information on it. The, the remaining public dashboards, so we'll talk a little bit about these specifically. Um, some of these are, are kind of useful, especially for things like exploratory analysis. So if you're looking to do additional um, research or if you want to really dig into things, this the dashboards can be a useful way to, to try and identify a topic that might be of interest. So um, we're actually going to start with this 911 call complaint dashboard. Um, and if you click on the dashboard, it will take you to the landing page for the uh, Tableau, the embedded Tableau dashboard. This one in particular, uh, I think is kind of neat. Um, I know when I was a paramedic, I was always kind of interested to know what a 911 call may um, correlate to in terms of EMS provider and the provider's impression. So this is based on the call complaint, the provider's impression and the patient's primary symptom. Um, you can filter this so you can, you can see here that the second most common 911 call complaint is a breathing problem. And if you select that, it will then filter to four breathing problems. What are the most common uh, EMS provider impression and patient primary um, symptoms? You can do that for any of these. Um, so you could see that for back pain as a provider impression, the most common 911 call complaint is back pain and primary symptom is also back pain. All of these come with a, a tool tip. So if you hover over anything that you're interested in, you'll be able to see additional information, including the ICD 10 code, um, as well as the percent of, of EMS activations and the uh, total count. As I mentioned, all of these have a companion document. So the companion document for this one is available here. They're all structured kind of like a Wikipedia page with contents and then additional information. All of these will have a, a description of the dashboard as well as inclusion criteria. So if you are wondering what is actually contained in the um, uh, in the dashboard, how things are excluded. That will be in each of these companion guides uh, with each of the value as well, or each of the variables and each of the values for um, the inclusion criteria. All of them also have a little bit of background on how to use the dashboard. So in this one, it describes the interactive bar charts as well as clicking and selecting individual um, elements. And then a little bit of information that's uh, kind of broadly applicable to Tableau in general. Um, there are some buttons at the bottom that will help you either reset the dashboard if you've created a special view or if you need to um, subscribe. And all of those are available if you um, if we go back to the dashboard, you'll see those buttons down here. So you can go you can go backwards, you can pause, uh, and you can also download a view. What is available for download depends on the dashboard and the um, the level of aggregation behind it. So we again, we can't identify any, uh, state, county, zip code, or EMS agency directly. Um, so depending on the actual dashboard, uh, either an aggregate report may be available for download or additional data may be available for, for download. Um, after that, we have a performance measures dashboard. Uh, this was created with... Um, with NEMSQA uh, and looks at the uh, National EMS Quality Alliance 
uh, performance metrics. So um, there are, I think, 11 uh, measures, um, and you can click on these and see how a uh, what the national performance looks like for uh, an individual measure. State data manager will have access to state-specific information for this and then uh, be able to look at individual agencies, but that, that data is not public. Um, this will give you an idea of sort of nationally how do EMS agencies uh, perform for these for these measures. The companion document for this dashboard also contains additional information, as well as some information on NEMSQA's website about the inclusion and exclusion criteria for the actual uh, dashboard. The public STEMI and naloxone administration dashboards are uh, specific to uh, sort of clinical impressions. This one uh, windows a pretty large uh, date range, but is uh, specific to SD segment elevation myocardial infarction, so kind of commonly referred to as heart attacks. Um, and you'll be able to see things uh, like a demographic board for uh, age, gender, dispatch complaint, um, what sort of service the responding agency is able to provide. Um, and then a histogram of scene time, as well as some EKG specific metrics. Um, are they receiving uh, aspirin, oxygen, nitro, um, and what sort of cardiac rhythm are they uh, are they uh, in when they when EMS first or first arrives? And again, all of these elements are available uh, as well in our research data set. So if something like this were of interest, but you needed event level data, you would be able to request additional data sets like the public research data set or potentially use the data cube uh, to be able to uh, uh, get additional information. Again, all of these have a tooltip that uh, contains additional information by hovering over um, the, the graphic that you're interested in and a companion document that explains the inclusion and exclusion criteria. The public naloxone administration dashboard uh, actually predates our work with ONDCP. Um, this includes a, a demographic breakdown of naloxone administrations. This is specific to naloxone administrations, whereas we work uh, pretty closely with um, ONDCP to try and identify opioid overdose as well as naloxone administration, but sex, age, um, time of day and month to see if there was seasonality for naloxone administration, as well as some clinical measures for complaints, impressions, and was naloxone administered prior to arrival. The public motor vehicle crash dashboard uh, contains some uh, pretty extensive data for motor vehicle crashes. The demographic information includes age, sex, race, uh, time of day, and uh, also some seasonality as well. Um, this one has been windowed a little bit because there is quite a bit of data behind it. And so the data is only available back uh, one calendar year. Um, but you are able to filter by uh, type of vehicle as well as what happened to the patient. So if you're interested in looking at something like fatal motor vehicle or non-fatal motor vehicle accidents, you would be able to filter by that as well as urbanicity uh, and geographic region. This, day, uh, this dashboard was made pretty closely with uh, NHTSA. And so um, at their request, we included the NHTSA region. Uh, so we are able to filter down uh, geographic region slightly to NHTSA region. Uh, response time is also included. And then probability of survival. So probability of survival is interesting. We're able to use uh, vital signs that are collected in the field uh, to calculate a revised trauma score. And then based on that revised trauma score, the probability of survival. Uh, it's kind of an interesting um, uh, computational problem because we get so many vital signs, but um, basically a revised trauma score of a certain uh, value with certain vital signs correlates to a probability of survival less than uh, some value. So you can see here there were uh, 22 motor vehicle crashes where the probability of survival was so severe or the injuries were so severe that the probability of survival was less than 2.7%. Uh, uh, so um, uh, just kind of interesting. It's, it's an interesting way to break down motor vehicle crashes and see how severe they are, especially by time. There's been a lot of interest in severe motor vehicle crashes during the pandemic and afterwards. 
Um, so that's that's certainly something of, of interest. There's also injury risk factors and type of drug and alcohol use uh, that are also selected um, in, in the PCR that are available. And then the last dashboard I'll talk to uh, about briefly right here is the public data quality dashboard. Um, this also describes uh, what information Nemesis is able to collect and collect well. So for roughly the past month, the data here displays what has been collected with um, uh, good completeness. So there are some limitations to, to the dashboard and how the data is displayed, but you can broadly see that um, you know, demographic information is well collected, uh, as well as things like times and injury information. This varies a lot by agency. So when you're looking at it at the national level, there, um, you know, may be some, some reasons why an agency may have a, a low value that are very valid or reasonable. Um, but because we have to aggregate this at the national level, some of the values may may change slightly uh, instead of when looking at them at the agency level, which is only available to the agency or state data managers. And again, this also has a companion document with additional information. And, and some of these dashboards, this one in particular has additional tabs. So if you look within the embedded uh, Tableau frame, you'll see that there are additional tabs you can select um, for uh, data quality. Um, I see some questions. Oh, looks like Julianne's responding to some questions in the chat. Um, we'll kind of pause here for a second and take a look at some of these uh, real quick. I don't know, Julianne, if there are any we. Yeah, you want to take a couple questions? So Bill Clark was asking for reporting purposes in the Tableau dashboards. How is Nemesis map, uh, mapping e-disposition 12 to the new disposition elements? Uh, and go ahead, Julianne had an answer, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, and Julianne, am I correct that we will be uh, will be making changes to some dashboards, but for the most part, they will remain three, four? Yes. So the dashboards that will be impacted by three, five elements will be adapted to accommodate that change. Um, they're not all dashboards will be impacted by three, five, but as we collect more and more three, five, those dashboards will be adjusted. Um, and we don't have a time frame yet on when all the dashboards will be updated to 3.5, but it's in our work queue. All right, and then it looks like uh, there was a question about how to get access for an individual agency. So they'll, they'll need to submit an AD request through our support desk. So um, if you come over on the main website to this uh, support tab, um, and open a help desk ticket. We'll be able to help you with the uh, agency request. No? Okay. And there is one more question in chat from Anne on um, dashboards that look at other times, such as response, scene, and transport. I think it's just the cube that we have um, response time, scene, and transport that's specific. Um, so that will be your best bet for that data. Um, like you said, the offload dashboard has um, specific time measures that are targeted to a pot and offload and turnover or turnaround time. But I can't think of a dashboard that we have that has um, response time in it. Can you think of one, Ben? I don't think we do. MVC dashboard does, but that's, yeah, but that's specific to MVC. Okay. So for those measures, um, you can always reach out to the TAC and we can do a custom query based on what you're looking for. Um, and we'll, Ben and his team are really good at helping to um, define what that query should look like um, and how to get to the information that you're looking for. Uh, Anne asked about adding median and percentile fractals to the cube. Uh, uh, probably not, uh, not to the cube anyway. Um, how those get calculated in the tabular cube is, um, uh, for, for right now, the cube will remain average. 
not the cube will remain average. <laughs> the cube will continue to calculate averages. Okay. I, I'm of the opinion that our cube is a little above average. Above average, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Slightly above. Hey, Ben, yeah. I know you mentioned reports, but can you demonstrate kind of how when you click on the report button, what you see and how you choose what you want to download or the different options of ways to download it? Sure. Um, so there are uh, typically a couple options um, depending on what you're looking for. So if you want to uh, snag a, a picture of a dashboard that you have um, maybe created a, a view of, you can click download and either as an image, a PDF or a PowerPoint, I'll just choose PDF. Um, and that will allow you to select either this view, specific sheets, if there are multiple tabs. So we'll just say this view, we'll let it choose how to scale it. And we'll say that I want to put it on a uh, letter uh, portrait paper. And then when you click download, if in this case, it would download a, um, a PDF. Or um, you can also share a link to the, um, to the dashboard. I, I, the share button will send it directly to the dashboard, which um, may or may not request a login. So sometimes the easiest is to actually share the Nemesis URL in your um, address bar if you if you want to share it. And then um, let's try one for a subscription. Um, I'm not sure that any of these are great uh, examples to subscribe to, um, but if a subscription is an option, you'll be able to, with the toolbar, uh, be able to fill out your email uh, address and subscribe to a, a dashboard. For the most part, that will be um, state data managers, software vendors, and then the, the ONDCP dashboard, which is currently down for maintenance. Uh, it looks like there's a question about submission, lag of uh, submission. Yes. So, uh, yes, we should have received all of 2022 data. So um, we run about two weeks behind. So we get about 98% of the data in 12 days and we bake into the dashboard and the data cube roughly a two week lag so that we know that any of the data to present uh, is uh, has been posted or submitted. Um, so it's it's pretty timely. The research data set only gets published uh, annually in the spring, and that's for the calendar year. What other questions? You know, Ben, I wanted to ask the audience um, to think about this for a second while I'm asking you another question. Audience, if there is a dashboard that you use or that you have used in the past that you found useful, uh, if you could share that, if you could either put it in chat or in a minute, um, come off of mute and let us know which one which ones you've used. Uh, but my question is, so how uh, how do you use the dashboards in conjunction with like the queue? Like how do they sure. how do they kind of function together? Um, so dashboards are really good for high level, timely, sort of actionable uh, information. So these are supposed to be data visualizations that allow you to uh, see something that is, um, you know, kind of high level, maybe uh, very helpful to get a very high level um, uh, big picture view. So if you take, for example, a motor vehicle crash dashboard, um, maybe you see something like uh, the histogram for scene response time all of a sudden starts to uh, increase or the dispatch month and year that has a seasonality for the summer changes to a seasonality for the winter. Um, that can sometimes warrant further evaluation. So then all of a sudden you say, uh, let's look at this further or let's find out why, you know, all, you know, what was previously men 20 to 24 year old, years old had the highest rate of motor vehicle crash and all of a sudden it shifts to older women, you know, something like that. This can very quickly give you an idea of an area where you need to look further and then potentially you can do things like target interventions or um, other education. Perfect. So let's say I have like a great idea for a new dashboard. How do I make a suggestion to the Nemesis tag that uh, maybe there's a, a dashboard that would create that would be useful for 
for more people? Yeah, so that's another good question. So um, you can always open a support ticket, a help desk ticket uh, here. And then we also have, um, uh, actually help desk tickets are probably the preferred way now mm -hmm. for, okay, yeah, just help desk tickets. Uh, open a help desk ticket and uh, you can let us know that you, you have an idea. Um, the life cycle for the dashboards tends to be fairly long. So it can take us a little bit of time to kind of go from idea to scoping to design and implementation. But this, these are things that um, we certainly welcome feedback on because we want to know what is going to be useful for our stakeholders. Any other questions we can answer? Anything else we can speak to related to the dashboards? All right, well, please reach out if you have any other questions. Uh, we certainly welcome feedback, questions, um, any other information you may have. Um, the easiest way is to open a, a help desk ticket to us. And uh, this recording will be posted on YouTube here in the uh, probably end of this week. Um, if there was anyone who you'd like to share it with, and uh, please let us know if you have any ideas for any future public trainings. And thank you all so much for attending.